Let's get over to my man, Mr. Tim Waters. We do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at odd-oracle.com. And then our man, Mr. Tim Ord, he is going to be doing a great workshop for us. And this is going to be a week from today. Okay, if you come out to the front page of TFNN, you're going to see it right on the front page. We're going to be talking about the six secret ratios that every trader should know. And we're going to be uh, going through these ratios. We got the TLT with the VIX. You get the SPY with the VIX. We got the SPY uh, on the daily, on the weekly. And then you get the bull bear ratio. And then, of course, the panic levels. Uh, so this workshop, folks, is starting at 4 o'clock a week from today. It goes from 4 to 5.30. The workshop is only $149. And you're going to learn things that basically, you know, I can tell you, not a lot of people in the marketplace have. That's the, that's the real bottom line. And if you want to basically bring up your probability of having successful trades, bring your risks down, and basically stay out of the market in, in a good amount of time because those things have to pull together, well, this is a workshop that you very well want to attend. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? All right. We sent some, uh, sent some charts over. Actually, uh, um well, we'll start with chart one, I guess, um, which is the, uh, well, the top window is the uh, SPY VIX ratio, which we're going to go over at the uh, webinar. But we did get long Friday, and the reason why we did get long Friday was because, uh, because of this chart. Okay. And um, actually, we were talking back in the, uh, I think, April, May period, uh, the, the, the bigger blue area on that chart. Uh, I got it, you know, it's a light blue area. I uh, want to talk a little bit about that. Everybody was kind of bearish around that uh, April, um, April, May period. And the reason why I was bullish because of this chart. And if you notice the, uh, uh, the SPY, which is basically, uh, well, be the third window up from the bottom. Yes. It was just going sideways there. It didn't really, you know, everybody think, well, that's testing previous high. It's going to be bearish. It's going to go back down. If the next window higher above that is a VIX. And uh, the VIX, you know, the market's going sideways, and the VIX was going down. So if it was going up, that would have been a bearish sign. But if it's going down and the market's going sideways, that means the SP's going to go up. Because when the VIX goes up, the market goes down. Right. And if the VIX goes down, the market goes up. And so the SPX VIX ratio shows that relationship, So, uh, which is the top window. But that kind of breaks it down how I, I stayed bullish through that time frame. Nice. Then ba uh, and it, it worked out. It had a decent rally. Oh, it definitely then, worked out, man. You're going long Friday. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Friday we're long again, and as a little bit smaller season, a little bit smaller deal. If if you go way to the right, you know it's a kind of blown up window there, and you can see what what happened. You can see the SPs going down into Friday, and the next window higher is the VIX. Well, actually, it is making uh, while the SPs was making lower lows, the VIX was making uh, uh, lower highs. And so, which is uh, the top one, was the VIX went sideways. So the VIX was actually going bullish, you know, uh, uh, in other words, making, going down yes. while the S&Ps was going down. And you get those two indices going the same direction, you're going to have a reversal, and that's exactly what happened. That is so uh, cool. So, yeah, let, let me put this. I'm going to put this. Uh, there's a big VIX chart I just put up here, too, folks. You can see what Tim's talking about. Yeah, that's, that's intriguing, man. It really is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, as long as that VIX keeps going down, so instead of watching advanced clients and all this other stuff, you know, it's still make life too complicated. Which, you know, it's it's if as long as if you know, if you know today's VIX is down quite a bit, and it is, it's down uh, to dollar seventy five, yeah. right? Yeah, right. And and the S P is up. That's exactly what's supposed to happen, right? And uh, and as long as that keeps going that way. You know, you hold on to this uh, this trade, so I don't see right. any worrisome sign right now. Hey, let um, me let me ask you this, Tim. You know, we, I can I can see there's no doubt. You know, the you know you nailed this nice coming. You know, rejecting lower price the whole ball of wax. What do you think? That, so let me ask you this: the, you know, we're coming off this 
And it looks like the volume is dropping off pretty dramatically. I mean, we have the Fed tomorrow, so maybe the volume will pick back up. But where's your head on like volumes these days after you, after you, let's say you, you, let's say this is an intermediate bottom. And right, that, that, you got an extra question. That's an excellent question. Actually, back in the day, you know, I thought, okay, you have a selling climax and you go into a buying climax, and everybody related that to the volume. Yeah, and markets can go up on light volume because there's no sellers left. Oh, I know that. that. Big, <laughs> that, that was the, the big, I know that's uh, being shot. Why I made in the past? Yeah, well, let's fl flip. Instead of looking at volume. To flip to chart four. Okay. And chart four, what's important here, and volume's important, but it's not as important as advanced decline. Okay. And so uh, even though volume's light on going up here, uh, chart number four is, is, is the uh, Zwag breast thrust indicator. Okay. It's, that, that's hard to say. Yeah. But anyhow, to get a bottom, you got to have a selling or a capitulation then you got to have a sign of strength. And everybody referred uh, as a sign of strength always in volume. Oh, well, volume can produce a sign of strength, but also the advanced decline can do a sign of strength. So you can have either or or both. Okay. Uh, so, so right now we don't have a sign of strength in volume. That's a good feedback. But, and and let, me, let me ask you on the, the Zwag, you know, um, method. Breath thrust, so, yeah. Yeah. So do we start counting again? Meaning, because we, right. well, we, well, we don't have a sign of strength yet, but let, let's picture tomorrow we have the Fed come in and the market likes it, and then we get a sign of strength. And then, then we start counting, what, is it 10 days again or is it a week? No, you start counting when this, uh, which is the bottom window. Uh, first, you got to have a capitulation on the Zwag breast thrust indicator to get capitulation is a reading below 0.4. Oh, I got it. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. So, and last Friday, I think we had 0.38. Uh, uh, then we uh, closed above it Monday. Now, uh, to get a Bragg thrust indicator, so now there's a sign of strength. You need this indicator to go from 0.4 to 0.6 in 10 days. I got so it. 10 days is... Uh, cool. Uh, a week from... Or two weeks from last Friday. Yes. So that's when you start counting. And yesterday we had a, a 0.43 on it. Now we got... It looks like about 0.48. Okay. Or so. So we got another week or so to get a, 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 a Zwag breast thrust indicator. You can do it on this indicator to get a sign of strength. You can also do it on the summation index, and actually you can even do it on the uh, McCollin oscillator. So there's different indicators you can use, but the advanced decline indicator is a better sign of strength indicator than volume is. And that's, that's great my, to know. my point. If you get volume with it, that doesn't that adds to the bullish case, uh, but you don't have to have it. Okay. So. Just stay right there, folks. Stay right there, Tim. And listen, folks, in between this break, get over to our website. If you want to understand these ratios, folks, and understand how Tim looks at the market and understand probability, risk, ratio, reward in the marketplace, come over to our website at TFNN. A week from today, it's going to be an awesome workshop. It's only $149, going from 4 to 5.30. Tim and I are coming right back. Stay right there, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and prowling with us. And we had a question, uh, and what the question specifically is, is that uh, uh, Tim's uh, ratios for the uh, webinar easily recreated in any type of system, such as Think or Swim, or are they proprietary ratios? That they're, they are proprietary ratios, folks, but, but the bottom line, he's going to give them to you. So you can recreate them in two seconds, yes. That, that, I mean, that's what the webinar is all about. If you want to really understand, yeah. you know, how he looks at the market, um, yeah, you know, bottom line is that you're gonna ha you're gonna have the formulas, and it's more than just the formulas, folks. Because what ends up happening is that you know that there has to be an answer and question uh, period, so you can really understand you know what you're looking for on a continual basis. So yes, you're gonna have the formulas. That's the bottom line, and they are easily right. created. Yeah, which is pretty cool. So um, okay, right. so. Where were let's, we here? Let's go, let's, let's for fun, let's go to chart two. Okay. I, I always had, you know, you know, you can't catch a, a falling knife. They call these falling knife markets and stuff. Right. You, I don't know. That's that's the term that people shot at me. I said, oh, you, what are you trying to do, catch a falling knife? Well, here's an indicator 
the Napoleon knife is when the market just opens up and just goes right through the floor. Yes. So everybody scatters and they head for the exit. And what the, what they're missing here is a great opportunity. But you got to have an indicator to uh, to catch a falling knife. You can't like, okay, that's close enough. I'm going to go in. Right. And you know, you, you get slapped inside of the head or something. Well, this indicator uh, will will so you, you know when a falling knife market is going on. And so, anyhow, the, uh, the the second window down from the top is a BBIX, which is a VIX of the VIX. Okay. And it and it really kind of accelerates and declines pretty good. And so I put an indicator to it, which is the bottom window, uh, which is a, a ROC, which is rate of change on a uh, three-period uh, method. So every time this uh, rate of change on the BBIX is above 25, you're looking at at least a short-term bottom. I see. And all those red lines across there are when the ROC, three-period ROC of the VBIX, uh, was triggered. And so, you know, this last decline, we didn't get it. But it doesn't t- catch every uh, signal, you know, like in that blue area coming off the top. Yes. There was really no panic. There was no acceleration of the VIX to the upside. So that's the reason why I think the market declined so much. Uh, because there was no fear, right? You know, the VIX is kind of a, the VBIX is kind of another fear gauge of the VIX. So, but all these, you know, short term, you know, if you're an option trader, this indicator is good to know. Big time. You're going in, um, knowing that you got panic in the VIX going straight up, and panic always comes up bottom. So you got no panic, you got no bottom, and so you know, so ideally. You, you got to know where panic forms and how to deal with it. So this indicator, you know, last time we got panic was uh, at the uh, May uh, 2023 low because the ROC got up to around over 40. You only need above 25, and that pretty much marked the bottom. The market went straight up. Yes, it did. And, <laughs> yeah, and uh, another indicator that kind of helps. I usually kind of at least put two indicators to a. Uh, on to a, uh, another RSI, which is a top window, it's kind of just another aid of, uh, anyhow, when the RSI of the VBX gets above 70 or so, okay. it kind of reinforces uh, the ROC of three. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, but these, these are excellent for option traders because options, you know, once you get a sign of weakness or, a, you know, you got to have, a, you know, right after you get a sign of strength. So if you don't get a sign of weakness, you really don't get a sign of strength. So in other words, if you're do- if you're trading the dull market, you, your your premiums on your options are going to go through the floor. So I know. It's, it's, I know. You're, you're just going nowhere. So you want to uh, buy options in volatility, it, and this is a way to define volatility. If you look at all those trades, you know you went through the floor immediately. You 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 you, you jacked right out of it straight up. And what Tim's uh, saying, no. so picture this, folks. I'm going to put this up here for a second so you can see how this works. So if you're in the option market, you know, bottom line, you, you, you do understand how this works. But I just want to explain it just for a few minutes for, so folks can really understand this. So when Tim went long on Friday, so what happens is this, folks, okay? So when the market's going down, just as Tim said, right, the bottom line is that, you know, the call option premium is basically going through the floor <laughs> because people are buying puts. That's that's just how it goes, you know. So the 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 correlation that if you can get close to you know highs or lows, and it doesn't have to get close. You don't have to nail them. The bottom line is that inside the option market, you can make it up for the premium in two seconds flat. Because as soon as the market starts going higher again, the option premium inside of the Whatever you're trading, in this case the spy, bottom line gets fed in immediately. That's just how it goes, you know. So, you know, we, and and what happens inside the option market? You know, you're you're only talking, you know, sometimes whether it's ten or twenty cents, but that ten or twenty cents is a huge amount of percentage. Um, and then you wake up in the morning, and you know, the bottom line is that they get they put premium back into them. So, pretty cool, man. Yeah. Right. Well, so, you know, for instance, that period uh, we talked about, um, you know, we had that uh, 
the May or no the be, 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 no, be the March uh, 2023 low. Yes, where you guys circled there went to 40. So the market rallied up, and you know that right after that that May sideways move. Yes. See, you should you never want to get in a sideways move and buy calls or puts. Because all you're going to do is just waste your premium. That's right. So market's going sideways. So what this chart does, it picks out all the high volatility periods and gets you in close to a, a significant low where your odds of winning increase significantly because you're not going into a sideways market. You're going into a volatile market that's, you know, slamming down. And so, you know, it's like a ball. You throw a ball hard, hardly, you know, hard yep. down, it's going to bounce. And so you're, what you're doing is you're going into a, a situation where the, mo- the, the the market ball, I guess you might say, is yes. slammed against the cement floor, and it's going to rebound up. Right. And that's where you're going to make your money at. So your odds increase significantly. So no. uh, that's my point up there. Yeah, I know. That, it, it's so. a great point, too, Tim. You know, it's a huge point. And, you know... If you don't trade options, folks, it's still a great deal, okay? But, you know, when, when you have an option player, it gets even more intense because you don't have to, you know, go for, you know, bottom big dollars inside the option market when you're, you know, trading right now because it's penny wide inside the option market and you can trade them every single day, which is pretty amazing. I mean, the, the, you know, the one-day options have changed everything inside the marketplace, man. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. what do you want? One well, day, this, two this, days, three days? I know these, uh, you know, those uh, one-day things, you know. This would be a, a, a great indicator. You can call me when when you think something, and I could, you know, we, we could talk about it. No, no, for but, sure. I mean, do you remember, Tim, in the 90s, we used to have to wait for white lightning? You know, I mean, white lightning, folks, would only be once a month, man. we have to wait all month, you know, for the last week. And, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, it's totally different now. Stay right there. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. And come over to our website, folks. You can sign up for this webinar right now. It's next Tuesday. You're going to love it. That's the bottom line. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Welcome back, folks. The Dow Dow's up 97, Nasdaq's up 47, S&P's up 23. And uh, don't forget, folks, our man, Mr. Tim Ord, who I'm speaking with right now, next Tuesday is going to be doing this workshop. It's from 4 to 5.30. It's only $149. You have all those ratios, and you will have the formulas for the ratios. That's what this is all about, folks. You not only have the formula for the ratios, bottom line, Tim will walk you through it and answer all the questions that you have. Uh, this is a fast hour, Tim, man. It's blowing my mind, actually. So what chart would yeah, you like to look a, at next? Yeah, let's, just, let's just go to three. Okay. Uh, just real quick. This is this is a weekly uh, SPY, and the bottom window is SPY VIX, uh, the VIX ratio. Okay. And th- um, there's a couple of different things on this chart. I put the Bollinger Band on the weekly SPY. And every time the Bollinger or the SPY closes below the lower Bollinger band, you usually add a bottom. And, and we did that on, on Friday. Yes. And also when it closes above the upper Bollinger band, you're at least going to go sideways here. But that was, I was watching that on, on the close on Friday. Okay. What really got me long was the bottom window. The mark was down hard, and the SPY VIX ratio was actually sideways. It didn't. It didn't go down. Like Interesting. It, it went sideways. Wow. That's some and divergence. Time, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, that's some divergence, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's divergence. Yeah. You, you know, if, if the market goes down, VIX supposed to go up. But, but this ratio. The only reason why I did the uh, SPY VIX ratio because it. You know, uh, if you do it the other way, well, anyhow, um, because the VIX goes up when the market goes down. Sure. And so what that was saying, uh, the market was going down, and the the VIX was going down with it. That's the reason why that ratio went sideways. So you got a divergence, and that blue area is in. Uh, I, I've done it in the past. Uh, you can see what happened in the past. They all picked out lows. And then you had uh, the so, Bollinger Band at the lower end. So that was your second right. one. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Right, and that's why you got me along. So, I like it. I it. like it. Okay, folks, uh, you know, uh, Tim, thank you so much. You have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. And, folks, uh, you know, bottom line, you have a great night, a safe night. This was a fast hour, man. And uh, don't forget, we got uh, Tim right on the front page. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.